Hi guys. <laughs> it's Amanda. I just wanted to go over this interesting, like, weird thing that happened today um, at the training I was at because it was kind of, I don't know, it was a little unusual. Excuse my face, I'm tired and about to go to bed. But I wanted to get this out because I can't, I haven't stopped thinking about it. It was really um, awkward and uncomfortable for me and it was kind of like a compliment and a dig at the same time and um, you know no no like hatred or negativity towards the person who made these comments um, who I don't know actually um, but it was just it was interesting so we were doing this training at, at work and it was um, like violence and um, active threats and um, how to defend yourself if, if someone, if you're in a, like an altercation, most of the training was on how to avoid the altercations anyway. So the point is at the end we were doing these physical, oh thanks for the hearts, hello everyone. So at the end we did these like physical moves where you would show like a, a an attack move or, or a, um, a grab or a hold that someone might do to you and a way that you could get out of it. And... Um, because I had done some training in that before, I think he just kind of, the instructor picked me and said, would you come out here and, and demonstrate with me? So I said, sure. So I went out into the middle of the room. Oh, thanks for the hearts, hello. Um, I went out into the middle of the room in front of this little, hey Angela, this little group of people. And what happened was, it, um, so the guy demonstrated this move um, and he he had me be the aggressor and he was deflecting the move. And someone made a comment and they were like, um, well, of course you can defend all, her. She's 110 pounds. Okay. <laughs> Comical, right? First of all, he said, you're 110 pounds. Okay. So I turned and I was like, yeah, right. And she was like rolling her eyes kind of like angrily. And I was like, I'm 170 pounds, <laughs> which I am, by the way. Um, 170 pounds and 110 pounds are far off. She didn't say it like a compliment. She said it like a kind of flippantly like, oh, of course he picked the sm and and then that's what the other girls said with her. Yeah, like he picked the smallest girl in the class. Of course she can, um, he can deflect that move. So here we are doing this self defense move, and it's supposed to be like a safe training place. And I'm up there in front of all these people, and someone makes that comment. I was like, oh yeah, I'm 170 pounds. And the girl goes, yeah, right. And then it was kind of like awkward for a second. And then as we started to continue the class, this girl on the other side of the room goes, I hate when people lie about their weight. And then the girl she said it to rolled her eyes. I'm looking right at her and the guy's still talking because maybe he just thinks they'll stop. But I'm looking right at her and the girl goes, I know, 145 pounds tops. So for a minute I was like, sweet, I don't think I've been 145 pounds since junior high. So in my head I was kind of like, yeah, heck yeah, I'll take it. And then, but instantly I felt kind of like I got slapped. Like, first of all, I'm not lying about my weight. Um, I know, Lauren, I would have loved to turn and flex my guns. It was a work thing. Otherwise, I would have just, I was in this sweater and jeans and in layers and after working all night. But I wanted to be like, look at this 175 pounds of muscle. <laughs> but I can't do that, right? But it was interesting to me because while a lot of times nowadays when people reach out to me for help fitness-wise, they don't always know where I started anymore. A lot of people are people I've met through social media um, and friends of friends and referrals, and so they don't know I started out bigger. But um, so a lot of times I get like potential clients or people reaching out to me for advice that will say things um, like, oh, yeah, um, I wish you knew what this felt like to be this big, but you know, or um, you don't know how hard it is to start working out when you're bigger. And I'm always like, oh yes I do. Have you never seen my before? And I send it to them. But sometimes, you know, I forget that a lot of people won't tell me that. And so they just are thinking those things in their head. But this was a unique experience at work because I've never really had somebody like blatantly, like you said, like body shaming or fit shaming as opposed to fat shaming. I've had plenty of experience on the other end of being embarrassed about how I looked or my weight or my size. But I've never really had someone insult me 
for the size I am now, which is not teeny by any means, and 110 pounds is just ridiculous anyway. You just have no judgment if you think I'm 110 pounds. But I could see 145. I mean, the thing is, I know plenty of people who weigh less than me who are quite bigger than me because of the way you carry muscle versus fat or whatever is differently. So you can weigh the same 170 pounds I do and be wearing a size 18, whereas I'm going to wear a size 8. But this was just a really unique experience. And so it, it all day in my head, I've been thinking about a couple things. One is, why are people so quick to shame other people for their success and not celebrate it? Why do we always have to be haters bringing each other down? I mean, I'm just going to keep putting my positivity and blowing my sunshine at you either way. And no, not every day is perfect. And no, not all my posts are perfect or happy or positive. And my life isn't, frankly. I have a lot of shit that goes on right here in this little house and in this little family and I have my own stuff but I would never look at someone and call them out publicly in an insulting manner for what they say they weigh or don't weigh and and, and I just um I was just kind of blown away. So it didn't really affect me to the fact that I wanted to go home and cry about it like maybe it would have back in the day when it was reversed. But it has weighed heavily on my mind all day because, um, first of all, if you have people in, luckily for me, this was just someone I work with that I won't, <laughs> thanks Amber, this is someone I won't like be spending time with all the time. Um, and actually, they're not even someone who works in my unit. Like I said, I don't know them and I'm sure she didn't mean it meanly. Maybe, if I give her the benefit of the doubt. But why is it our inclination, especially as women, I hate to say that, to to knock somebody else down? Why is it your first instinct to say, oh, pff, liar. Like, yeah, because first of all, yeah, so many women go around like throwing an extra 30, 40 pounds on top of themselves and telling people they weigh more. Whatever. Um, secondly, like, I mean, if someone told me they weighed that much, I'd be like, Damn, you must be packing some muscle, <laughs> you know? So, I don't know. It was just a unique experience, which leads me to this story that is from Darren Hardy that I heard. And it's this, I call it the crab story. I don't know what he calls it. But I want to say it, tell you guys because, and I might have mentioned it before or blogged about it before. If you followed me for a while, you might have heard it, me reference it. But this is a true little story. And it's just relevant for so many areas of our lives where people are up in your... Um, Business in a negative way. Oh, thank you, Jill. Now you don't make me cry. That's the kind of stuff I like to hear. And um, so the crab story, you know. So there's these kind of crabs. And they this when they catch them, right? I want to tell you how they catch them. They lower this cage into the ocean. And they it has an open top. It's not like a little trap door. There's no nothing tricky. It's just an open cage. And at the bottom, they put some food. And they catch thousands and thousands of crabs. But they don't put enough food for thousands of crabs. So how do they catch all of the crabs? Well, I'm going to tell you. What happens is, of course, there's food in the beginning. And one crab crawls down into the box. If you're someone who's trying to have some change in your life right now, I want you to listen to this. Because this, is, this will happen to you when you start trying to make a positive change of any kind in your life. This is going to happen from some direction so these crabs they go into this cage and they go after the food and then another crab says oh look he's in that cage he's got food and then that crab goes in and then another crab says oh look those guys are down there in that cage and that crab goes in but eventually the food is gone and yet more crabs and more crabs and more crabs climb in so at some point you have this open topped cage just full of crabs and some crab gets the bright idea to go, hey man, there's no food in this cage anymore. I don't know why I'm sitting here. I'm getting out of here. And he starts to climb out along the side of the cage. Do you know what the other crabs do to that crab? They knock it down off the wall. Why? They don't know why. But that crab's trying to leave, and they aren't having it. Because if I'm here, you're here. And if I'm miserable, you're miserable. And if I'm going to sit in this cage and starve, so are you. Okay? So that's what the crabs do. So let's say that crab is like, oh no, I'm still getting out of here. Or maybe some other crab gets a bright idea to climb out. They will clip his arms off with their pinchers and maim him 
so he cannot climb out of the cage. And they will all sit in that cage with no food until they all die. Isn't that awesome? So this is how I want you to relate this to your life because you will come across crabs like this. And you don't want to be stuck in that cage with those other crabs. So don't let anyone else dull your shine like happened to me today. And don't let anyone else smother your dreams or tarnish your glitter and sparkle or whatever it is you've got going on. Because when you try and do something different, whether it's starting your own business, whether it's making a move that's different, like, um, like me and my business, it's not something that's for everyone or that everyone thinks or believes in or thinks is a great idea, but I love it. I love helping people, so I'm going to keep at it. Whether you're trying to lose five pounds, I, I've had clients who are overweight whose whole family is overweight. And sadly, some of the meanest people to them are their other family members because they're miserable and they want those people to stay miserable. So all they will do is spend their time telling them how hard it's going to be or what this is a gimmick and they shouldn't bother or they shouldn't waste their time. And um, these that's especially hard when it's the people that you know and love the most because you expect them to be your biggest supporters, but sometimes they turn out to be your biggest crabs. So if you're just joining, go back and listen to the crab story because I'm telling you, anytime somebody tries to stomp on me like that in some way, whether it's intentional or not, it can make you doubt yourself and your goals. It can make you doubt what your dreams are or what you're striving for, or what you're working hard towards. Maybe it's a promotion at work. I mean, it doesn't have to be weight loss. Um, it doesn't have to be starting your own business. But I can tell you there are plenty of people who think that what I do is idiotic and they get sick of my posts and my positivity. And, and sometimes they probably get sick of the realness too because it's not always, you know, sunshine and glitter farts, right? But when you have an experience like I did today, and somebody wants to call you out or say something passive aggressively degrading, you need to be armed for that and know that, thank you, Stacy. You need to be armed for those moments and know that you're doing something that you're true to in yourself and that you deserve to fight for what it is you want and to strive for whatever happiness it is you're chasing and to dream big, even if it's a little scary, and even if the people around you don't always understand what you're doing. Um, not everybody will always understand what you're doing or what's important to you, but a true friend or true family that loves you will be supportive either way, and sometimes you might just have to give them time. But no matter what, don't stay in the cage with them. You climb out and you push towards it and you don't give up no matter what because you don't want to be one of those dead crabs in the bottom of that cage. I don't know if I explained that very well, but I sure hope it made sense. Rochelle, you can go back and replay it. I'll post it right after this live so you'll be able to rewatch it. But um, it's just one of those things, like these these things, they kind of take me aback, especially uh, today because it was a stranger. And um, I really didn't expect it to be as negative as it was when the girls, oh, 110, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, right, that's just ridiculous. But then to have someone throw something negative on top of that, that's, you know, that's somebody who doesn't like where they're at or is unhappy with what they're doing. And um, it's much easier if everybody abides the status quo and does what we're all supposed to do. And um, we all go into debt. We all go to college. We all do this. We all do that. We get married. We have kids, whether it's what we want or the right order for us or our chosen path, whether we want to have children. I mean, there's so many things. And uh, we can't always please everyone. That, you know, can't please everyone, so you got to please yourself. You know, who is that? 
Kenny Rogers. He, he knows what he's talking about. So <laughs> I'm not saying be selfish and only think of yourself, but I am saying if you have a goal, go for it and be strong and don't let those people get their little pinchers on you and drag you down because they'll try because it makes them feel uncomfortable if you succeed and it makes them feel like if you get out of the mess you're in let's say you're in debt let's say you're overweight let's say whatever it is whatever your goal is let's say your goal is to pay off your student loans or um, to lose that 10 pounds or what or to do a fitness competition like I'm doing or whatever your goal is and that person thinks somewhere in their mind well I'd like to do that too but that's impossible. You can't do that. You can't lose 100 pounds. You can't get that promotion. You're just to this. You can't get promoted to that. And so on and so on. If somebody feels that way, and then you go and do it, you just gave them a crashing dose of reality that it's possible. And that means that they don't have an excuse for not doing it. So if you want to be a coach and build your business and be successful and people say that's stupid and you can't do it and then you go and make a success of it, hi sleepy, then, then someone will say, well, I guess you can do it. Crap. And then that makes them feel inadequate. Someone just woke up. You want to say hi? Yeah. Anyway, someone just woke up from their nap. So I better go. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. But I hope you take the time to listen to the story. And I hope you think about what... Mm. I'm trying to find Ducky. Uh oh, where's your Ducky? We'll go find him together. Michelle says, hi, sweet boy. Anyway, just don't let anyone dull your shine, all right? Do what you gotta do. And remember, like something my old softball coach used to say, water off a duck's back. Or in the infamous words of... Janet Jackson, haters gonna hate. All right, love you guys. Thanks for listening to me chat. Bye. Hope it helped you in some way because I needed the reminder today. Bye bye.